So in most of my videos, we spend a lot of time looking at my Triple O deployment that runs on multiple physical servers. And I understand that's maybe not the most accessible way for everyone to use Triple O. So I thought it would be interesting and a good idea to introduce everyone to Triple O Quick Start. So basically what Triple O Quick Start is, is you run a bunch of Ansible playbooks against one physical node. So that node might have 64 gig of RAM. And this will create VMs for the undercloud, a controller and a computer as a minimum. And that way you would get one controller, one compute. You'd have an undercloud and an environment that you can use that's all self-contained within a physical server. And I saw this question come up on Reddit too. How can I deploy a, an environment on a standalone node? So this is probably the best way to do it because what you get is a, a good representation of what a normal triple O deployment would look like, whether it be like a Red Hat OpenStack platform, 16, 13, whatever it might be, or just triple O master. So we're gonna deploy basically my lab, which is off the master branch using triple O quick start, just so everyone can see how that works. So if you go to the triple O quick start um, documentation page, which is here, just the very first link has a bunch of commands that will help you deploy the environment as quick as possible off the master branch. So basically what we do is we just copy and paste these commands. It's really, really simple. It should work without much of a hassle. The only problem you might have is that it uses Docker IO instead of Quay by default. So you might get rate limited if you try to deploy and it doesn't work and then you try to deploy again you might start to get rate limited by Docker IO. And in that case, you can just edit the container image prepare file and replace Docker IO with Quay.io. And I'll show you that as we go through. So this can be run from any node. I generally tend to run it from a jump box that I have here on, on my network that's connected to my work VPN. And then I point it to whichever physical node I might have in that environment. And we just replace that, that vert host variable in the documentation with an IP address or a fully qualified domain name that's resolvable to you. So let's just get started. We'll get straight into it. So I've already actually got an environment deployed. Oh, that transparency might be annoying. One second. So the first thing you need to do is clone that, that repo. So git clone the triple O quick start repo just into a directory that's convenient for you. So in my case, I've downloaded that to documents code triple O quick start. And then from there, we can run the quick start command, which is this one. So we'll walk through what this command does. So there's a bash script in this directory that takes a bunch of arguments. The first one is this dash R. So we're choosing which release we want to deploy. And in this case, we're just doing master. We're doing no clone, which will not git clone certain repositories. We're going to deploy all the tags, so all the Ansible tags. This one here is interesting. So this dash dash nodes allows you to give it a YAML file that defines your environment. And in this case, I want to deploy three controllers and three computes because it's a fairly big hypervisor. But if you only have a hypervisor with maybe 64 gig of RAM, you might want to just do the one controller, one compute, which is what the documentation, uh, the triple O quick start documentation we looked at actually references. It's got one controller, one compute there. And the playbook we're going to give it is the uh, quick start .yaml. And then I'm just giving it the IP address of the hypervisor I want to deploy against. So we just run that. Actually, just a second, we'll clear out my quick start directory first. So anything for your, your labs will be written by default to this home slash dot quick start directory. So if you're redeploying, I just delete that directory because it's going to clear everything out anyway. And anything in there might cause issues for my deployment. So we'll rerun that now. And we can see what happens is it sets up a virtual environment, a Python virtual environment, and it installs the pip dependencies in that virtual environment and everything else that it needs for the deployment will go in that, that directory. So once it finishes doing all of the pip stuff, it's going to then just run an Ansible playbook that will go talk to the hypervisor, configure a stack user, create all the VMs that you've asked it to create. So in my case, a director node, three controllers, three computes. Um, it will download the images, prepare the VMs and start them up. So once they have been started, then we can move on to our next step. So for example, we could use the SSH command in the documentation to SSH to the undercloud and see what it looks like. But the next step we wanna run is the undercloud install. 
So if we go back to our documentation, so we can see that I've just run this step. I've just changed it from the one controller, one compute to three controls, three computes. And this is what I was saying. You can use this to SSH to the undercloud. So it just keeps the SSH info in this directory. Once we want to install the undercloud, which is when this step that's currently running is finished, we will just run this command here. Um, and I'll just be changing the one controller, one compute to three controller, three compute to match my environment. The dash I means keep the existing inventory and tear down none. So we don't want to destroy the environment in any way. We want to use the environment that we have to deploy the undercloud. Once we've done that, we can make some backups of that directory. Just so if the overcloud deployment fails or if we want to do anything and restore to that point, we've got a point to fall back on. Then we will prep for the overcloud deployment, which will do the introspection of the nodes and get all the flavors ready, everything that needs to happen. And then we will deploy the overcloud. So the only issue that I really run into on master is, as I said, just using Docker IO instead of Quader IO. So basically what we do is we will normally fail on this step, installing the undercloud when it tries to pull in all those containers. So all we do is we SSH to the undercloud just with this command and we edit the containers prepare parameter.yaml file and change Docker.io to Quader.io and I'll show that when we get to it just in case you want to do that. So we will um, just let mine run. It's going to take some time to finish, but I will start the video again once that's finished and we'll do the next step. Okay, so we can see that that one's finished now. So we're going to move on to the next step, which we bring our documentation back. So we don't need to SSH to the undercloud. There's nothing we can change right now anyway. It's just got the like the ironic Python agent and the overcloud full images on there. There's nothing else really there that is going to be of interest to us. So the next command we're going to run is this one down here. So I'm just going to take this quick start extras under cloud YAML file. We will go back to our terminal. So it's it's similar the command that we're going to run, but we need to run it with the dash i and the dash tear down none. So if I just search my bash history, I should have that back here. There it is. Okay, so this time we're going to run the quick start as h file. We're going to use the master branch as well. So the dash r master, no clone, tags all. We're still going to use the same nodes file, the config nodes, three controller, three compute. We're going to add this dash i for keeping the previous inventory. Tear down will be none. We don't want to tear down anything. And the playbook we want to run is this quick start extras under cloud.yaml. So we're just going to run that one. So that's going to install the undercloud now. So basically create that containers prepare parameter file. It will then run the OpenStack undercloud install. Wait for that to finish, make sure it works. And then it's going to return. We can move on to our next step. So there's going to be a lot of cuts in the video. I'm just going to keep pausing when we get to this stage so you don't have to watch the entire Ansible run. But if we run into any issues, I'll unpause. We'll address the issues together so that if you run into the same thing, we can fix them for you as well. Okay, so that next one has finished now. So if we bring back our documentation again. So the next step, we could make a backup here to back up all those VMs. I don't really care. I don't mind redeploying them over and over again, so that's fine. So we just need to change the playbook we're gonna run. We'll keep everything else the same and we will just run this quick start extras over cloud prep, which will do the introspection and everything that needs to happen before the deployment. So we go back to yeah, so we just want to change this playbook at the end here. And then we kick that off. So that will run through, do the introspection, and then when it comes back, we'll be able to do the deployment. But let's just take a look at this file I was talking about we might need to change. So if we ssh-f quick start ssh config ansible and undercloud, that will log us into the undercloud VM that has just been created. So we can see here now we have a whole bunch more files and one of them is the containers prepare parameter file. If we VI this file, we can see that it uses docker.io here. So what we can do is just change this to Quay and that will ensure that we don't get rate limited by Docker at any point because we don't have an account and we don't want to start an account just to be able to do this. The other thing is 
in Quay, the tag is just slightly different. I, I haven't found the RDO tag in the Quay Triple O Master, so I just use current Triple O. So if you just save that file, everything from here is now going to use Quay and the current Triple O tag instead of the Docker IO ones. So we can just let that run. Um, again, I'll pause the video, we'll come back at the end of it, and we'll just run the overcloud deployment, see how that works, and we'll wrap up the video. Okay, so that step's finished. So now we need to go to our final step, which is deploying our overcloud. So we just use the quick start extras overcloud playbook. So back to the same command we're running all the time, and just replace the playbook that we need to call. So instead of prep, it's just overcloud this time. And if we go and log into our node again, we can see we've got some log files in this directory now. So for example, if there was a problem with the undercloud install, we could have a look in the undercloud install.log file. So this will be all the information that was recorded about the undercloud being installed. You can see it was successful in this case. Uh, we've got an introspect log, so we can see what happened during the introspection. Go at the bottom. So, so Triple O Quick Start is used by Triple O CI. So, when you submit a change, Zool will often use Quick Start to do things like verify standalone deployments or verify multi node deployments. And you can see that in Zool when you look at a change. Um, if we open a change here as an example, I'll just grab one. So here's a change for example, if we go to the first one. So we can see Zool reports here on everything it checked and you can see there's a bunch of checks that it does here like containers multi-node for example. So if we open that up, and we go over to the logs over here. Go to undercloud node, go to home. So we can see we've got some very similar type log files over here like undercloud install, etc. And you can see the quick start files that are used to reproduce that. So using Triple O Quick Start gives you a reproducible environment of, of what we're using in CI. So if you're making a change, and if I'm making a change, I often will deploy a quick start environment and just quickly test my change in the quick start environment. So I deploy the overcloud, deploy it all normally, and then I'll log into the undercloud and make a change to triple O heat templates or triple O ansible or whatever it might be that I need to change. And then I'll run that test in the triple O quick start environment to avoid breaking my own lab. But also just because I can quickly reproduce that in that environment. And then if I need to raise a bug from that, I can raise a bug with all the reproducer steps based on triple OQ. So at the moment, we're just going to allow that to run through on the overcloud deployment. Um, we'll come back and check to make sure it's worked after that. Okay, so we can see that that one there has now finished. And if we go back to our undercloud on the other tab, we can see that it finished the deployment and gave us what we would normally expect for the deployment output. And if we SSH from here to heat admin at overcloud controller zero, doesn't really matter, CTL plane. You can see that our pacemaker services are up and running and everything has now been deployed and configured. So that's, that's basically all there is to it. It's really, really quick. If you want to get an environment up and running and just play with it and see what triple O is like, you could then, you know, go into your overcloud deploy script here, for example, it's all here, you can run it manually, you can go in, you can add environment files to your deploy script, do all the things that you would normally do after setting it all up manually, but just have it done in a way that works for you and it, it gives you a working environment to then play around with and make some changes and see what those changes impact on the overcloud. And as I said, you can always change the version, you could do train, you could do cleans, you could do, do Asuri, whatever version of OpenStack you want to deploy, you can do with Triple O Quick Start. It'll be the same process, it'll run through those Ansible playbooks. You might get stuck on that Docker.io issue, so just change it to Quay.io and then you should be fine. 
so yeah, that's that's the end of it. That's all there is to it. You know, just a few Ansible playbooks that get executed and deploy your environment. It's as easy as that, and it should bring down the barrier to entry for Triple O if it's something you've been considering but you're not quite invested in doing yet. I would suggest go out, have a go at this, get an environment up and running, poke around, try and break things and see what it looks like. Hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot them through in the comments. I'm pretty active on Reddit as well, so if you post questions on Reddit, I should see them there, and I um, hope you all have a good day.